while, uh, five months to be specific since my last video. Um, I'm hoping to start posting a little bit more frequently, um, but saying that who knows what's going to happen. Um, but anyway, I don't want to dwell on the fact that I haven't posted in a while, um, I'm just excited to be talking about books again. So in this video I'm going to talk about three of my favourite Wicca and Witchcraft books. Uh, they're in no specific order, so it's not as if it's a top three. They're just books that, um, that I really love and I keep coming back to. So these are books that are for different areas of Wicca and Witchcraft. Um, if you're looking for books for beginners, then I do have another video with my book recommendations for beginners. Um, I will post a link in the description, so feel free to check that out, it's on my page as well. Um, so let's just get started with the first book. So uh, book one is um, The Illustrated Herbiary by Maya Toll, um, and this was published in 2018. Uh, the illustrations are by Kate O'Hara and I mentioned that because in the illustrations throughout uh, the book are amazing and it's one of the reasons that I love it so much so it's just stunning so you can even tell by the cover itself um, how beautiful this book is. I do use this book for different purposes um, and the publisher describes it as being for herb lovers, tarot fans and seekers of nature-based wisdom and it is all of those things. So firstly the book is um, a collection of um, 36 herbs and information about those. Um, however it's written in um, an oracle style which will make a little bit more sense later on. Um, so the herbs have been personified, they've been given human qualities um, and characteristics based on the properties of that herb. Um, so along with the information there is also um, Kate O'Hara's illustrations there. Um, and then for each of the herbs, Maya Hall has also offered um, a ritual and a reflection that connects with each of the herbs. As well as using the book as an information source, it's also designed to be used as an oracle, so similar to tarot card guidance. The book does come with 36 oracle cards, um, one to represent each of the herbs, obviously, within the book. Um, there are some simple spreads in the back of the book as well that you can use. Or you may even just want to do something as simple as um, a one card pull, so pulling a card from the deck and then exploring the information within the book related to that card. If you choose a card and you want to do some more work surrounding that, then you could also do the ritual that's in there and the reflection that's associated with that card. So that's just another interesting way that this book can be used. Another way that I use this book in my personal practice is for creating spells and rituals. Um, I do love green witchery, which does hint at a book that I'll be looking at later. Um, and I love using herbs within my magic. So if I'm preparing a spell or a ritual, I will research the specific herbs that would work well with it. And this book is a really quick guide for that. So for example, I want to start exploring dreams more, maybe lucid dreams or prophetic dreams. So I found that uh, mugwort uh, is a good herb for that. So Toll describes it as between dreams um, and says that it's good for guiding you through your dreams. I do have some mugwort, so I will start to use that in a lot more of my rituals and spells uh, regarding um, my dreams. Another thing that I like to do with this book and the deck is to pull a particular card from the deck, read the information within the book, and if I feel that it's really relevant and I have a strong connection with it at that point, then I will try and include and incorporate that herb into my next ritual. So that's why I love this book so much. Um, it has a lot of uses, as well as being beautifully written um, and beautifully illustrated as well. It looks really good on your witchy bookshelf. So this book is also the start of a series of similar books by Maya Toll. Um, since this one, she's released the illustrated bestiary, which is very similar in style, but it's featuring animals. There will also be a third book called the illustrated crystallary, which focuses on crystals. It was due to be published this month. However, the release date has been moved to September. I do have an e-arc of the book from NetGalley. Um, and I will be releasing a review of that uh, closer to the publication date. So if that's something that you might be interested in, um, then please do keep a look out for that. Okay, so book two is um, this one, 
The Green Witch by Aaron Murphy Hiscock. It was released in 2017, so it's still a fairly recent one. Um, and on the front it says it's a complete guide to the natural magic of herbs, flowers, essential oils and more. And that is basically why I love this book. Um, just because it's got a lot of natural magic in it and that's what I use in my practice. It was actually this book that pushed me towards green witchery. So since I read it I've taken much more interest in my garden. So as well as plants and herbs we're also growing some fruit uh, and vegetables. And it was all thanks to this book uh, that the inside of my house uh, is also full of plants and herbs as well. So I don't think you have to really consider yourself a green witch um, or be on the green witch path in order to appreciate this book. Um, it's for anyone that enjoys using natural ingredients uh, in their spell work or in their general practice. So what is this book for? Um, so the first part of the book it does detail what the path of the green witch is and how to incorporate green witchery into your home, into your garden and into your everyday life. It explores the use of the elements in magic um, and how the green witch uses the wheel of the year and the seasons. So it's got lots of information that's just applying to Wicca and witchcraft in general. The thing that I find most useful about this book and one of the reasons that I do keep coming back to it time and time again is because it's got information on the use of trees, flowers, crystals um, and their properties so I find it a really good resource when I'm creating my own rituals, charms or spells. So the last few chapters of the book include how to use all of the natural resources, so the herbs, the plants and the flowers within your practice. There are guides to making your own incense, resins, spell bags, balms, perfumes, teas, oils, bath salts and even lots of kitchen recipes as well. So it's a really really good starting point into using natural resources in your spell work but it does also encourage you to take that and then design your own creations to suit your own needs. Again this is a good reference book that I do keep coming back to regularly um, and I think the reason that I love this book so much is because it's the one that started me on the green witch path. Okay, finally, the last book that I want to mention is The Modern Guide to Witchcraft uh, by Sky Alexander. This was published in 2014, so it's a little bit older than those two, um, but I still do consider this one of my favourite books. Um, it says on the front that it's a complete guide to witches, covens and spells. The reason that I got this book was because when I started my Wiccan journey, I got a lot of the traditional books that were by authors, that are seen as maybe as an authoritative voice on witchcraft. People like Raymond Buckland, Scott Cunningham um, and Gerald Gardner who are sort of the original, shall we say, older authors when it comes to the craft. Now I'm not saying there's anything wrong with these authors at all, in fact I have books by all of them and I really love them. Um, I'm currently working my way through Buckland's complete guide to witchcraft but I wanted something a little bit more up to date and a little bit more modern so that's where this book comes in. The thing that appealed to me the most about this book is that it is about spellcraft so creating your own incantations and potions and charms etc whereas a lot of the things I'd read previously only showed you pre-made ideas so this book really helped me when designing and personalising my craft for my own specific situations it allowed me to develop my practice and move on to the next level so that I was exploring a lot more on my own um, through trial and error. So this book does contain everything that a modern witch needs to know. So it has the basics from what is witchcraft, a quick history, the connection to today's world, uh, the seasons of the witch, so the wheel of the year, creating a sacred space, creating an altar, but what I found sort of really useful was the information to help you decide what type of witch you wanted to be and what path suits your needs. So there's information about the gods and goddesses, so gods and goddesses from around the world, from different cultures that you might feel a connection with and want to include in your practice. Um, but then also the different types of witchcraft that are out there that are available. So there's the green witch, the head witch, uh, shamanism, uh, druid, voodoo and then wicca. Um, so I'd sort of already decided that um, wicca was the path that I wanted to take but this sort of explained a little bit more as to what um, 
the difference between witchcraft and wicca was and also a little bit more information on green witchery uh, when I decided that's another path that I wanted to take. So the second part of the book is um, an open grimoire so it's got guides on creating charms, amulets, talismans um, as well as different types of spells to do with prosperity, with love, protection and health. So there are already quite a lot of books out there related to witchcraft sort of in general and they contain all of the things that I've mentioned but this book for me does it really well. It's organised, it's thorough and the author's delivery of the information is really down to earth and really natural so you can tell that she's really passionate about the subject. So those are my three favourite Wicca and witchcraft books. Um, I say that at the moment because I'm always adding to my collection so my favourites do change. I will do an update if I come across another book um, that I really love. Please let me know what you think about these books that I've discussed today. Have you read any of them? Would you agree or disagree with what I've said? If you do have any recommendations for me, anything related to natural magic, to green witchery or plants and herbs etc, then do pop those in the comments. I am on the lookout uh, for a more comprehensive reference guide to plants and herbs and their properties, so if you do know a good one, um, then please do let me know. Okay, thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next video.